Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are revisiting an old friend, the GeForce GTX 980 Ti, and we're going to do so with a 36 game benchmark covering the 1080p and 1440p resolutions. Then, in addition to that, I'm also going to see how the GeForce GTX 1070 performs relative to the GeForce RTX 2060. Trying to knock those over. So, in a way, I suppose it's more of a GTX 980 Ti slash GTX 1070 slash RTX 2060 revisit. Just rolls right off the tongue, that one. Anyway, a little over a year ago now, I reviewed the RTX 2060 for the first time. And since I missed the official launch, because Nvidia lost our sample in the mail or whatever happened there. Uh, but anyway, because of that, I didn't have to rush out our content. So instead of the usual dozen or so games I include in day one coverage, I went the full hog and provided a massive 36 game benchmark. Looking back at that data, I found the RTX 2060 was able to beat the GTX 1070 Ti by a slim margin, making it 13% faster than the vanilla GTX 1070. Unfortunately, at the time, I didn't have time to include older GPUs, such as the GTX 980 Ti, so that means the Maxwell-based flagship GPU was absent from the testing. So it'll be interesting to see if the margin from Pascal to Turing has changed in any way. We're also taking a look at the much faster Turing-based RTX 2060 and comparing that to the Maxwell GTX 980 Ti. For those of you who may have forgotten, the 980 Ti was released back in mid-2015 for $650 US, and the RTX 2060 in early 2019 for $350 US. And that makes the Turing-based GPU three and a half years newer and almost 50% cheaper. Still, the GTX 980 Ti was a beast of a GPU back in the day. It shared the same 601 mm squared die with the Titan X. And although not all SM units were enabled, it still packed an impressive 2816 CUDA cores, and with 6GB of GDDR5 memory on a 384-bit wide memory bus, it enjoyed a memory bandwidth of 336GB per second. Then a year later, the GTX 1070 arrived, and although it packed just 1920 CUDA cores, a whopping 32% fewer than the GTX 980 Ti, Thanks to around a 60% increase in clock speed, performance ended up very similar, and this was largely due to Nvidia moving from TSMC's 28 nanometer process to what, at the time, was their latest 16 nanometer process. Then the jump to the 12 nanometer process with the RTX 2060, that was a less extreme jump, let's say, but here we did get an entirely new architecture. That said, the 2060 die is actually 42% larger than the GTX 1070 die, and although the core count has only increased by a little over 10%, the cores are now much wider and support technologies such as real-time ray tracing. Also, despite the massive increase in die size, Nvidia did sell the RTX 2060 for a little less than that of the GTX 1070, and really though, they had to, because as I said earlier, at launch it was just 13% faster. Still, Turing is a much more modern architecture when compared to Pascal, featuring better support for DirectX 12 and Vulkan, so again, it'll be interesting to see if the margin has grown, and if so, where? In other words, which games are favouring the Turing architecture? Anyway, let's get into the setup. Representing the GTX 980 Ti, we have the MSI Gaming model. Uh, back then, graphics card names were a little simpler, so it's just gaming. No Gaming Z or Gaming Z or anything like that, just gaming. Then we also have the MSI RTX 2060 Gaming Z and the GTX 1070 Gaming X. So three MSI gaming models and no, MSI didn't sponsor this content. It just worked out that way that I had three MSI cards. So I think it's kind of good that we have three fairly similar cards in terms of design, cooler and all that sort of stuff. Then powering the GPU test rig is the Intel Core i9-9900K overclocked to 5 GHz with 16 GB of DDR4-3400 memory. As usual, rather than go over all 36 graphs here, which would take about an hour, we'll look at around a dozen closely, then jump into the performance breakdown graphs. For the discussion, I'll be focusing on the 1440p results. And finally, for all 36 graphs, please visit our Patreon page where you can find them for free. Doom Eternal is an interesting game to start with as it makes heavy use of async compute, and this is a technology neither the Maxwell nor Pascal architectures were able to utilize at the hardware level. At 1440p, the key advantage the GTX 1070 has over the 980 Ti is the 8GB VRAM buffer, that and what is very likely better driver optimization. The end result means the 980 Ti was almost 20% slower. 
However, it's the RTX 2060 and its more modern architecture that really excels in this title, reaching almost 100 FPS on average, and that meant the 980 Ti was 31% slower. It's also worth noting that the 2060 makes out even better at 1080p, as like the 980 Ti, it too is limited to a 6GB VRAM buffer. So whereas it was 18% faster than the GTX 1070 at 1440p, it's a whopping 36% faster at 1080p, as the memory constraints are less of an issue at this lower resolution. Moving on to Resident Evil 3, and here we find a situation where the GTX 1070 is no faster than the GTX 980 Ti. In fact, if anything, it's actually a little bit slower. This was also the case with Resident Evil 2. Both games use the same engine and look very similar graphically. So with 68 FPS on average 1440p, the 980 Ti fares very well in this title. The RTX 2060 was faster, but this time by just a 13% margin. So while that is certainly progress, it's not really a lot of progress. Here we do see a significant step forward for the Turing-based GPU in Rainbow Six Siege. Here the RTX 2060 was a whopping 35% faster than the GTX 980 Ti and almost 40% faster than the GTX 1070. Has to be said, Rainbow Six Siege is a very compute heavy title, and previously this meant AMD's 5th gen GCN products walked all over Nvidia's Pascal GPUs, such as the GTX 1070. However, the upgraded Turing cores tackle that weakness, and now it's Nvidia who enjoys an advantage in this title, even when compared to the Navi based GPUs. The leap forward here really is quite incredible, though it has to be said with 79 FPS on average, the GTX 980 Ti still delivered very impressive performance at 1440p. The GTX 980 Ti also performs very well in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, spitting out over 60 FPS at all times in our test for an average of 81 FPS. It was also just 7% slow on the GTX 1070, though it did trail the much newer RTX 2060 by a 24% margin. The RTX 2060 really does perform well in this title, even at 1440p, and a 23% performance uplift over the GTX 1070 is certainly nothing to sneeze at. Having said that, the game does support ray tracing and is therefore no doubt heavily optimised for Turing, and we have previously witnessed Pascal GPUs such as the GTX 1060 performing quite poorly relative to its competitors, in that case the RX 580. So while I'm sure Turing's architectural improvements do help here, I'd also wager that driver optimizations are playing a key role as well. The GTX 980 Ti performed well in F1 2019 using the new DirectX 12 mode. Here it was 11% slow in the GTX 1070, but more importantly was able to provide smooth player performance at 1440p with 76 FPS on average. The RTX 2060 was 32% fast in the GTX 980 Ti and 18% fast in the GTX 1070, so reasonable performance uplift in this latest F1 title. Fortnite now also supports DirectX 12, and using this API, we see comparable performance between the GTX 980 Ti and GTX 1070 at 1440p using the maximum quality preset. So that means for competitive type quality settings, either will work just fine. Still, the RTX 2060 does offer a 23% performance boost, and that's probably not the kind of gain you'd expect to see in this older title. Here we have another popular battle royale game in Apex Legends, and here the GTX 1070 and 980 Ti are again very evenly matched both averaging just over 70 FPS. The RTX 2060 was about 20% faster at 1440p, which is a strong performance uplift and certainly not a bad generation on generation performance improvement. Shadow of the Tomb Raider still looks very visually impressive despite the fact that it will have its second birthday later this year, but as you can see, it is still very demanding, even at 1440p. Here, the 980 Ti failed to achieve a 60 FPS average, as did the GTX 1070, both rendering just over 50 FPS. This made the 23% boost offered by the RTX 2060 quite noticeable, it has to be said. World War Z is yet another title where the GTX 1070 and 980 Ti are very evenly matched, and that is another title where both easily push above 60 FPS at 1440p, using the maximum in-game quality settings. The RTX 2060 was around 18% faster, so again a reasonable performance uplifter there, but it has to be said the 980 Ti hardly looks outdated. The Gears 5 results are quite interesting. The GTX 1070 is clearly faster than the 980 Ti at 1080p, offering a 12% performance uplift. However, at 1440p the results come together, and here the 1070 is just 6% faster, verging on sort of margin of error type differences. The RTX 2060 is also just 13% faster than the GTX 1070, though we see a similar margin between the two at both tested resolutions. 
Ghost Recon Breakpoint has recently been updated to support the Vulkan API, and this has led to big performance gains for modern GeForce GPUs, gains of up to 20%. It seems pretty clear that Nvidia hasn't optimized for the 980 Ti and probably the rest of the Maxwell generation, as the GTX 1070 was a whopping 18% faster at 1440p, a similar result to what we saw with another new title, Doom Eternal. Again, the RTX 2060 is just 13% faster than the GTX 1070, so a pretty unexciting generational leap there. Last up we have World of Tanks, and as is often the case with these older titles, we see very little difference in performance between these three GPUs, particularly at 1440p. We're talking about less than a 10% margin between the slowest and fastest GPU. This can be attributed to better driver optimization for the older GPUs, and or the inability to take advantage of the modern features supported by the newer GPUs. Okay, so for the most part, the GTX 980 Ti still looks to be handling itself rather well, though there are some titles such as Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which appear to lack proper driver optimization, let's say, and therefore will require gamers to reduce graphic quality settings for smooth performance at 1440p. Since we've only looked at about a dozen of the games tested, let's see how these GPUs compare across all 36 games. And again, for individual graphs that we didn't just look at, so games that weren't covered, The Division 2 for example, you can find those graphs for free over on our Patreon page, the link will be in the video description. Right, so at 1080p, the GTX 980 Ti was on average 5% slow in the GTX 1070, and the only outlier here being The Division 2, where the 980 Ti was, for whatever reason, 26% slower. And I did go back and retest this game a few times uh, in its current state, it just doesn't play particularly well on the Maxwell-based GPU. And for those wondering, removing that result changes the average by a single percent, making the GTX 980 Ti 4% slower. For the most part though, you're looking at little to no difference between these two GPUs, as 21 of the 36 games tested saw a margin of 5% or less, which I typically deem a draw. Moving to 1440p reduced the margin to 4%, and this time removing the Division 2 result doesn't change that margin. And also this time, 22 of the 36 games saw a margin of 5% or less, so again, these two GPUs are still very evenly matched. When compared to the RTX 2060, the GTX 980 Ti was 20% slower on average at 1080p. Again, the Division 2, along with Doom Eternal, are weak titles for the Maxwell part, but as the average suggests, for the most part, it was quite a bit slower. And as was the case when compared to the GTX 1070, we see the 980 Ti trails the RTX 2060 by a similar margin at 1440p, for this matchup, it was 19% slower on average. It's certainly the more demanding, newer, or more technically advanced games where the RTX 2060 gets away from the GTX 980 Ti. The margins are much smaller in titles such as World of Tanks, War Thunder, For Honor, and Resident Evil 3, for example, whereas they're quite considerable in titles such as Doom Eternal, The Division 2, Control, Dirt Rally 2, Strange Brigade, Wolfenstein New Colossus, Rainbow Six Siege, Red Dead Redemption 2, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and, well, a few others. You get the point. So, while the GTX 980 Ti is starting to show its age a bit, the once mighty flagship GPU still has some fight left in it yet. So that is great to see, but I have to admit while the, let's say the initial intention of this benchmark session was to investigate how well the 980 Ti stacks up against the newer GTX 1070 and RTX 2060 and 2020, I often found myself a bit more interested in the battle between the GTX 1070 and RTX 2060. But I'll stop myself from jumping right into that, and we'll talk a little bit more about the 980 Ti versus the GTX 1070. Last time I compared these two head-to-head -head in a large range of games, the 980 Ti was actually 1% faster on average, so in other words they were basically identical overall, and really that is still mostly true today. The games that tip the results in the 1070's favour include The Division 2, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and Doom Eternal. None of those titles were tested with previously, and really the 980 Ti probably shouldn't be that much slower, particularly in the Division 2, so I suspect this is a result of Nvidia failing to optimise their drivers for this older hardware. As I noted earlier, the GTX 980 Ti is almost 4 years old now, and we are pretty confident based on what we've seen with past testing that Nvidia abandons all optimizations around the 6 year old mark, and this can be seen when looking at Kepler based GPUs for example. So I suspect we're getting to a point where the GeForce 900 series of GPUs will start to fall away in newer titles, much like what we've just seen in Doom Eternal for example. So when secondhand shopping it would probably be wise to keep that in mind. 
Now let's shift gears to the RTX 2060. Upon release, we found based on another 36 game benchmark that it was on average 13% faster than the GTX 1070. Today, the RTX 2060 was found to be 20% faster on average. So I guess the question is, which games are responsible for the overall improvement in performance? The biggest contributor is Control, a game that wasn't tested with previously. Again, this is an NVIDIA sponsored title and a great deal of time has been invested into making sure RTX series GPUs deliver maximum performance in this one, largely so ray tracing performance doesn't result in a complete slideshow. Interestingly, performance in Strange Brigade has also been dramatically improved since its release, and this does make use of async compute. Although not a popular title, it is often used for benchmarking, so it doesn't surprise me too much that NVIDIA has made an effort to optimise performance for the Turing-based GPUs in this one. The RTX 2060 was also 39% faster in Rainbow Six Siege, and that's not too different to the 33% win it enjoyed using the older DirectX 11 version of the game. We also see that Nvidia has optimised Turing for Wolfenstein the New Colossus. Originally the 2060 was 20% faster, now with the upgraded drivers and multiple game patches, it's 33% faster. And Red Dead Redemption 2 is another new game that I wasn't able to test with previously because it hadn't been released yet, and it does massively favour the RTX 2060. So between those new games that better utilize modern GPUs and Nvidia's focus on driver optimizations for Turing, the RTX 2060 has been able to further distance itself from the GTX 1070 and consequently the GTX 980 Ti. For those of you still rocking a GTX 980 Ti, I'd say overall it is holding up rather well and you're probably quite satisfied with the experience, but I suspect it will start to fall away now and upcoming generations should see it outpaced for around $200 US. The GTX 1070, it's still a solid buy for now, but with Nvidia focusing its attention on Turing and then future generations supporting ray tracing and DLSS, it will be interesting to see how well the Pascal generation of GPUs goes over the next few years, and no doubt we'll have plenty more benchmark content in the future that'll monitor the situation. And with that, I think we're done for this one. Uh, don't forget you can grab all the graphs for free over on our Patreon page. So if you want to look at any of those closely, you can yeah, link in the video description. You can do that. Uh, give the video a like if you appreciate all the testing that went into this one. And if you'd like to become more involved with the Harbour Unbox channel, then consider joining us over on Patreon. You gain access to our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes stuff, and a few other cool perks. But above all else, thank you for watching. I am your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.